I wanted a place for people to receive authentic guidance and practical ways to awaken. Thought-provoking, paradigm-shifting, and empowering. This is about expanding our human consciousness to create a wave of new possibilities. I'm Dr. Teresa willard White, and this is Quantum Minds TV. Welcome to Quantum Minds TV, where we take a deep dive into various perspectives on what it's going to take to create a shift in human consciousness. Today on the show, I'm delighted to have Steve Rees joining me. Steve has been involved in the healing arts for over 30 years, including sound healing, and he's actually built over 31 harps and recorded 14 albums that are available on his website at Calming Harp. He's also established a YouTube channel where you can uh, tune in to all of his music and, and what he has to share. He has thousands of followers who write frequent comments about how this music has changed their lives. And he publishes a weekly podcast titled Calming Harp and is also the author of a monthly article at Masters of Health magazine. So now, Steve, when I first became aware of your work, it was at the TCCHE conference in Florida that we both spoke at. And what you presented really resonated with me because I am a huge proponent of all things with the healing power of music, and especially when it is tuned in to the right frequencies. So I'm really looking forward to diving into this topic with you today and exploring the power of sound and music and solfeggio frequencies and so much more. So maybe we can start with, first of all, how did you get into making harps on your own? Well, uh, that was interesting. The uh, I always loved Celtic music, and um, harp has always been a, a great part of that uh, genre. And um, so I couldn't afford a very expensive one at the time. So for my, for my 45th birthday, I found a kit that I could make, and I bought it and made it and just started playing around with it. And uh that's really how I got started. It, it was a small harp. It was not the best quality, but it got me started. And uh, within a year, I tell people I was brave enough to let people hear me play. <laughs> and uh, since I was doing hemodialysis um, in the hospitals, which is a, like about a three-hour treatment, I, I started asking patients if it, they would mind if I played a little bit while we were um, spending the time and that's that's really how it started I really had no intent of discovering what I discovered but uh, that's that's a whole nother part of the story we'll probably get into <laughs> yeah wonderful so so when you were playing uh, for the people who were in the hospital uh, what kind of effects did it have on them and, and did you notice anything that was you know indicating a measurable difference in the effect that the music was having on them Absolutely. In fact, that was the thing that surprised me the most. Um, the I saw blood pressures come down. Now, in, in dialysis, blood pressures will come down because you're taking fluid off. But but it was it was much more than I normally saw. And then I saw heart rates um, slow down. Um, I would see oxygen saturations come to, up more than the regular. And patients that never slept started sleeping. And some that would ask for pain medicine that wasn't working. As I started playing, the, the pain medicine started working. And so there's just, there was just these physiological effects that were going like, wait a minute, there's something going on here. Yeah, wow. wow. That's amazing. That uh, Interesting that the pain medicine wouldn't work before, but once you were playing the music, that it, it would start to work. It's almost like the music itself was helping to reduce right. their pain levels. Well, and with, you know, a study I've done since then um, indicates that the, the music actually encourages the neurotransmitters, which are actually responsible for helping that pain medicine work. So mm -hmm. it, it made scientific sense, that, but I, it took me a while to discover what the science was behind it, so. Yeah, one of the things that um, I've researched when it comes to music and uh, its effect on us, not only is there 
the brain, right? A lot mm. of people have studied the effects of music on the brain, such as, um, you know, the, it, the uh, right brain and left brain or the right hemisphere and left hemisphere, the cortex are automatically both engaged when we have music because there's the creativity of the music, right. which is more the right brain side of it. And, and the musicality of it, but then there's also the structure of the right. music and, and some kind of a, a flow to it that the left brain is often analyzing. And especially when you have music that doesn't have lyrics, because lyrics would overemphasize right. more the left hemisphere. Um, but when you have music just, you know, that, that is musically uh, structured and rhythmic and creative and so forth, that's automatically harmonizing both the left and the right hemispheres of the brain. Right. Yep, absolutely. And, 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 and that whole brain state is something that we really want so that we can access more of the capacity, you know, of, of right. our brain capacity. But there's even more to it than that. Um, there was this wonderful book uh, that I've read and that my mom introduced me to uh, called The World is Sound, Not a Brahma by Joachim Ernst Beren. Have you read it at all? I have not. I'll have oh to check gosh, that one out. Yeah. I highly recommend it. Absolutely. And he talks about how, um, and, and he introduces some of the work of uh, Dr. Uh, Tomatis, uh, who studied the ear. And he talks about how the ear has three times as many neural connections to the brain than the eye does. So, you know, so many people are very often taking in information through their eyes and what right. they see, but we're actually taking in way more information through our ears than we are through our eyes. Uh, so we can really use this sound and music as a way to help us rewire the brain by stimulating it in new ways because it has even more connections than wow. the information we're taking in with the eyes. So that's pretty amazing. That is, uh, yeah. It, it kind of maybe helps you understand why someone who goes blind is still able to do so well because of their going, their ear starts to take over their senses. Yeah. Yeah. yeah th and they can do it. So we know from blind people, for example, that they can hear a, a wider range or they can tune into more right. subtle frequencies and sounds than what most people who can see are because we become so right. reliant upon our vision. Right. Right. Um, and they can do things like echolocation where, you know, as they're hearing the sounds bounce off of objects, it actually can create a three dimensional image inside their brain yeah. uh, to navigate their way through uh, spaces and so forth. So we know that we can expand our hearing capacity right. beyond what most people tend to do. And all it is, is really a matter of training it, right? Yeah, the, when you said the, um, the uh, creating the image, it uh, reminded me of uh, John Stuart Reed out of England. Uh, he has a whole sound healing um, website and everything I've, and he's done a uh, program that I, I signed up to. He was involved with um, dolphin research here in Florida in which the, the sonic, they would bounce off. Uh, as we know, the dolphins use a lot of sonic. What they discovered, could, because he has the, and you mentioned when we were talking earlier about the cymoscope, um, that he, he has one that's um, in water that so then gives you a three-dimensional image of what bounces back, of what the, oh. what the sound looks like. So we actually wow. can see sound and that's exactly what the dolphins are doing because when they bounce off like a diver in front of them, they actually get that image of the diver that comes back with that sound. Mm -hmm. And so they're actually I have a cymoscope built into their brain, I guess. You know? How so. amazing. They must see the their uh, environment in very beautiful patterns then. <laughs> right, exactly. I, I, I just wonder what they see. That would be incredible. <laughs> yeah, so they it's amazing that they will see, because their eyes are kind of on the sides of their heads, right? So they will see in front of them by sound more so right. than by sight. And then if it's muddy water, they'll still see. <laughs> Yeah, wow, what an amazing uh, talent and gift, exactly. right? One of the other really fascinating things about the ear and how it supports our body to 
really relax and come into a much calmer and quieter state within when we listen to things like music and, and various harmonious sounds is that not only is the auditory nerve directly having three more times connections to the brain than the optic nerve is, for example, but the vagus nerve runs right by the ear and it is stimulated by the vibrations that come in through sound, specifically when it's sound of a harmonious nature or of the right frequencies. And the little vibrations that happen in the ear will stimulate the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is directly connected into our autonomic nervous system. And it specifically controls what is called the parasympathetic nervous system. That is when our body will be going into more of a rest, relax, digest, and healing state. So when the parasympathetic nervous system is activated, it will support us to, to come to a greater state of peace, calm. It will help us to release stress. It will help us to uh, go into that healing state. And this is what we want to do. This is one of the big goals of meditation and proper breathing is to stimulate the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve directly connects into the heart. It directly connects into our gut. It directly affects our digestion. And it is sending a lot of the information that happens you know, in the lower parts of the body from the heart and the gut, it sends it upstream to then also inform the brain. There's about 80% of the information flowing through the vagus nerve goes upwards, upstream to the brain so that the heart and the gut can control the brain functions more so than the brain controlling the, the other way around. Uh, so when we listen to sounds and we're taking in music and harmonies and the right frequencies, and it's stimulating our vagus nerve, this will really support us shifting into that healing state. And this is why we can see such an instantaneous effect when music is played, such as what Steve is sharing here, from how he played the harp in the hospital and immediately the clients or the patients were having less pain, they're um, sleeping better, they're able to heal faster and so forth because their parasympathetic nervous system was being activated by the healing effect of music upon the vagus nerve. Now, the, the word vagus nerve, it actually comes from the Greek vagus, which means wanderer. And the amazing thing about the vagus nerve is that it actually wanders around the body and directly connects into every organ in the body. So not only is it helping to stimulate our parasympathetic nervous system when we listen to the sounds of, of music and harmonies, but also every organ of the body is directly being affected by the vibrations coming in from those sounds and harmonies. So we can use music and the properly tuned frequencies and of sound to heal the organs, to directly charge them up and give them the right stimulation so that they can come into a more harmonious state, which is where you know so much of this sound healing work uh, really, you know, this is the science behind it.
So I would imagine that, you know, when you were playing your harp and the music to the people who were in the hospital and, and also to people who were healthy and just wanting to listen to that music at home, um, that music that they hear through the ears goes and carries into the organs of the body and helps hopefully bring them into a greater harmonic state. Yeah. You know, it's, inter it's interesting. It was kind of a play on words, but uh, we always talk about dis-ease, disease. But if we can take the, the, um, the dis away from the disease, we get ease. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot of what's happening as well with the music is that it, it takes over our all of the stressors and all of the things that are they're placing it, the music kind of sets us into a place of ease. And I think, you know, just going along with what you're saying, that that is a part of that healing structure that's taking place. And so, mm. yeah. So can you explain for people a little more the principles of, of harmony and resonance and how, you know, so this, he, this disease, this ease of the dis harmonious state and okay. and then how we can work with harmonies to help bring um entrainment and resonance into our system for greater state of harmony right right yeah the um <laughs> what very interesting that that idea of entrainment that you just mentioned um we actually started with the dutch clockmaker <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he, he noted that he would work on a clock and then he'd set it on the shelf where all the others are. And it was in its own time, but within a few days, it was right in time with all of the other ones. And he began to, to study that and realize that that was a phenomena that was uh, observable and actually definable. And um, so we, you know, we know as much as, as women who live together end up with same, very similar uh, timings on their monthly cycles and, and so many other things. So this entrainment idea is if we're entrained to something negative, that that's going to be a deleterious effect. If we're entrained to something positive, then we're going to have good effects, have the, the ease instead of the dis-ease. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you think about, um, you know, going around the city, for example, uh, how many disharmonious sounds are we being bombarded by? Absolutely. And, <laughs> and, and you know, you one, it's no wonder, really, when you're having that many sounds and kind of chaotic noises that are jarring to the system and there's no harmony in it, and it's all like kind of flooding our, our senses. Uh, that when you go out into the city and then you finally get home, you feel drained, you feel stressed, uh, things are tensed up. So one of the ways that I love to um, create that state of coherence and, and harmony again within my body is that when I get home, uh, to really make sure, number one, I just tune into the silence, right? The yeah. background of silence and just allow that to reset uh, but then number two would be to put on really beautiful, soothing music that helps to create a, a more intentional, harmonious okay. state again. You know, when you compare the sounds that we're exposed to when we're out in the city and you have all this white noise and not just white noise, but you have like the chaos of, of various sounds that are happening around us in the city and it's very jarring, it's very uh, dis disturbing and disharmonious in the body. And so when we feel drained when we get home after being out for a day in the city, yeah, we can, we've all had that experience if you've ever been to a city. Uh, but on the other hand, when we're in nature and you have the sounds of the birds and the wind blowing through the trees and, you know, the water flowing or, you know, just the sounds that were, you know, that are, that are so soothing to our, our body and to our soul when we're out in nature and it's so renewing, uh, it's fascinating that there is a, a sympathetic resonance that happens in these sounds of nature that also connects to a, a particular frequency, which is around 7.8 to 8 hertz, which is known as the Schumann frequency or the Schumann resonance. Now, the Schumann resonance is the magnetic energy fields of the Earth itself have a frequency. They have a vibration 
that they operate at. And so, um, the, you know, their baseline, while they have many frequencies, and for example, if we ever have a solar flare, the energy coming in from the sun that hits the planet will alter those frequencies or that, vi it's like it plucks the strings of the magnetic lines of the earth. But the base frequency, the foundational note, if you will, that the, uh, that the earth's magnetic field resonates at is this Schumann resonance is this 7.8 to 8 hertz frequency. And so that frequency level really is interesting too, because in our brain, when our brain is entrained into that frequency level, it is shifting us from a, a really outwardly focused, what we call a beta brainwave state into a alpha theta and um, that alpha state. And, and then as we even transition more further into a theta state, those are when we're in like light relaxation, meditation. And as we get into theta, we go even deeper into the, um, the deeper meditation state. So this is entraining our brain. In other words, when, we, when we're connecting to that Schumann resonance, it's entraining our brain to relax in addition to putting us into a sympathetic resonance with all of nature and the Earth's magnetic field. You know, another another uh, thing I learned from John Stuart Reed, um, his program, he was showing that um, those natural jarring sounds that you were talking about, um, they're usually single, single frequency, uh, but they're mixed, but they're single. They're not. Uh, but when we get out into the natural world where there's a wind blowing through the trees or the beach, the waves are crashing on the beach or the stream is flowing over the rocks, there are just myriad of ultrasounds that are being produced that we don't even hear in our ears, or we don't perceive, I should say, that are, we're hearing. But, but what happens is, is that in our nasal passage, we have these cells that take those ultrasound waves and actually um, produce the, the nitrous oxide, which reduces our blood pressure and slows our heart. And so, so sound is even in being even the sound that we don't hear can be positive in our lives. And um, so it's one of the reasons why it's so important that you get out into the natural world and away from the from the hustle and bustle just to allow those sound. But the interesting thing is he also mentioned that the harp and several other instruments he showed, he had actually a little meter that was measuring the ultrasound production. And the harp, in spite you know, on top of the sounds that you're hearing, actually has all of those ultrasounds going on as well. And, wow. and uh, until I learned that, I'm gonna let, it was, that was just adding another reason why I was seeing what I was seeing. Wow. Wow. I love that. I never, that's new information for me. So the fact yeah, that it was for me too. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That there's these ultrasounds coming in that we're not hearing with the ears, but there's the, the fine hairs and so yeah. forth are still being vibrated by them. And our body has evolved and adapted to using that energy as well is pretty phenomenal. Important um, to breathe through our nose and not our mouth because our nose is where those cells are. <laughs> yeah. Good. So and when we go, and feel that that's part of why <laughs> yeah and and of course going out into nature is so renewing in so many ways because yeah, not absolutely. only are you in, exposed to all the sounds of nature there's also just being in the elements and being able to ground and and bring yeah. you know sort of our our sense of balance uh right. back and it, it can dissipate so much energy like they even talk about, you know, going barefooted on the ground. Barefoot know, grounding, yeah. To, to ground out that, all that ionic charge and let it dissipate into the earth. And, you know, that that'll help to restore homeostasis uh, yeah. when we do it regularly. So for sure, nature is is a, an important tool that we can use to create that balance within ourselves. But how do we, you know, when we're listening to music and we want to um, be intentional in creating that environment within our own home, or, you know, even if, if we have the earphones on and we're going about the city, you know, it's a, it's a good way to try and create a bit of a buffer. Maybe the outside um, won't have that buffer, but the, 
internal, what we're feeding into our brain and our, our mind and our, our soul uh, right. will be affected by that music. Right. How do you um, find with the music that you've put out and the feedback that you've received from people as they've used it, what kind of uh, results have they shared with you? Oh my, <laughs> I have literally thousands of comments on my YouTube channel. <clears throat> um, people tell me that they couldn't sleep, now they're sleeping. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I have one guy wrote me a note, he said, I, I've been trying so hard to get off drugs. And he said, until I found your music, I wasn't being very successful. But he said, when I found your music, he said, they're gone. I just, uh, it just, for some reason, it did something in me that made it possible. And so that was one of the more dramatic ones. Um, amazing. I'll tell you an interesting story, <laughs> if you have time for it. Oh, for uh, sure, we have time. Uh, <laughs> One of the first, this is one of my first experiences I uh, had when I was playing in the hospital after about a year of it, the uh, nurse instructor came to me and she said, have you ever thought of making a CD because the patients are asking if they could take something home with them? <laughs> Everybody was fighting over which room I was going to play in. <laughs> and so I said, well, I hadn't even thought of that. Well, a friend of mine said, well, I know, I know a fellow that has a recording studio. So I made went up and get it, got all that, uh, long story short, got the CD out called Healing Harp. And um, so about six months later, I got a, a letter and it had a $20 bill in it and a little note. And it said, uh, you don't know me, but a friend of mine made a copy of your CD and gave it to me. And she said, shortly thereafter, my husband had a severe heart attack and went into the emergency room. And um, the doctor pulled me aside and he said, I just want to let you know that I don't expect him to make it through the night. It's, it's a very serious, his, his enzymes are way up. It's just, it's really bad. So they finally took him up to the CCU, got him hooked up to all of the monitors and everything. And she went up there and, and she asked the nurse, she said, could I play a CD for him? And she said, well, if you put the headphones on, um, and so it doesn't bother anybody else. So she took that CD the, of, of harp, healing heart and cycled it through the night. And in the morning when the doctor came in, he went to the foot of the bed, grabbed the clipboard, looked, started looking at the numbers, and looked up at the monitor, looked back, said, what, what's going on here? And the nurse said, well, I've just been, he said, what did you do? And she said, I've just been following your orders. And he said, no, this isn't the same patient as it was last night. Three days later, he was home. Wow. And, you know, I tell people I can't put um, a, a note on my CDs that it will cure all diseases. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but she was convinced that the difference was that, that music that played through him all that night. So. Yeah, wow. That That's was the, one of the more dramatic... <laughs> And, and I bet really touching and really encouraging yeah. to, to keep it going and to really yeah. recognize that there's so much power in music. And especially when that music is, is designed with an intention of bringing healing and bringing peace and, um, you know, really just soothing and, and, and helping support that balance and that health. Yeah. Uh, I think the intentionality behind the music is very important um, in addition to the frequencies, in addition to the composition, in addition to if there is lyrics, the the uh, consciousness of those lyrics, right? Right. The, the meaning and, and so forth. So there's so many things that go into music. Join us again as we continue to dive deeper into this fascinating conversation with Steve Breeze on all things healing music and sound in the next episode. This Conscious Conversation was created, produced, and recorded by Dr. Teresa bullard White in collaboration with Steve Rees and edited by HH Films and Photo. The theme music was created by Tim Mountain of Evenload Productions. Quantum Minds TV is a product of the Quantum Learning Academy.